Okay, my dear chess friends, welcome to this video, and we're going to discuss a system for black that is termed the Sicilian Dragendorf. What is the Dragendorf? Well, essentially, it's a hybrid between the Sicilian Dragon, which is this here. And the main move of the dragon is, of course, g6. Bishop e3 is a normal move. Bishop g7. f3, keeping the knight out from harassing the bishop on e3. And the mainline dragon is the knight comes to c6. But here we play a move that is very well known if you are a Sicilian Nidor player, a6. And this move here signifies the Dragondorf. It's a hybrid between the Sicilian Dragon and the Sicilian Nidorf. And we're going to play in a similar fashion to the Nidorf. And instead of putting our knight to the most natural square, C6, we're going to put it on D7, as one does in the Nidorf, and we're going to bring it to E5, and eventually to C4. We're supported by this pawn. White will be induced to either swap, swap this knight off, or create some weakness in his position that we can attack. And the idea is essentially borrowed, borrowed from the English opening with reverse colours. And some very famous grandmasters have used it. Mikhail Botvinnik experimented with it in the early days. And it's been played in serious tournament play by British grandmaster Simon Williams. Now, I myself have played it with some success. And the idea is quite simple. We are going to delay castling. Now, the reason for that is that in the mainline Sicilian dragon, if you white or black rather generally castles, and white gets quite a serious attack against the castle position in the Yugoslav attack. And the position usually looks something like this. And he'll swap off this bishop. And he'll play f g4, h4. He'll crack open the h file. And he'll get some type of serious attack against the castle king position. Well, what we're going to do in the Dragondorf is we're simply going to delay castling for as long as is possible. And instead, with the move a6, we'll focus on our own queenside counterplay along that open c file, a minority attack with our pawns. And once this knight reaches c4, we'll either gain the advantage of two bishops or white will be forced into some type of concession. And this is essentially our idea. And the ultimate piece setup looks for black something like this. We've delayed castling. We've immediately begun our counterplay on the queen side. And we have advanced our knight to an excellent post. And the result of this is, is that when white tries the Yugoslav attack, something like this, we're simply pleased to swap off this bishop. And if he takes retakes with his queen, it's not entirely clear what this queen is going to do here on h6 by itself, if, even if it comes in something like this. The centre has not opened and it's not entirely clear if the centre will become opened in the near future. And the, 
the white player who is well versed in the Yugoslav attack, he'll find himself very quickly having to think for himself. So this is essentially the Dragondorf. And just let me show you some games that I have played in it. And you can follow the annotations because they will explain it in greater detail. Okay, here's a game I played on chess.com blitz site. My opponent opened with e4, I played c5, I have for many years. Played the Sicilian with some mixed success. Knight f3, d6, d4, open Sicilian, c takes d, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and g6. And the beginning of the Sicilian dragon. And black is essentially prepared to accept a very weak d5 square for dynamic play. Easy development of his pieces. If you're going to play the Sicilian dragon, you must watch this square d5 like a hawk. Here my opponent played bishop to e2. And I'm not entirely sure about this move. I think the normal move is bishop to e3. And this move looks like some old school move from the 1950s. Anyhow, bishop e7, we continue as if we are playing the Sicilian dragon. Bishop to e3 and e6. And this move signifies the dragon dwarf. We're going to expand quickly on the queen side, get our queen side counterplay going before we castle and create some problems for our opponent. f3, knight bd7, as in the Nidorf, queen to d2, black is uh, castling queenside, and will storm my position with g4 and h4, h5, b5, and you need to be careful when making this move because sometimes white can simply undermine these advanced pawns with a move like a4. And it's really better to do it with a bishop on c4 because then it comes with tempo. Anyhow, castles queenside, bishop b7, h4, and here it comes. <laughs> Attack along the h file. But notice, dear chess friends, my king is not castled. He's not on g8. And therefore, the attack is much, much less effective. Knight e5. Bishop h6. And I simply don't mind swapping bishops off. In fact, I'm glad to swap bishops off. Because I don't believe the queen is very well posted on h6. Rook to c8, g4, here it comes. b4, immediately getting our, our counter attack going. The white knight went to b1, queen to c7, rook and uh, queen are awesome down this C file, C3, Queen A5, Knight to B3, hitting the Queen. White is getting scared, but there's no any real reason to be scared. Well, really there is, but <laughs> what can they do? Queen takes A2, and Knight to D2, absolutely fatal move. And checkmate, of course, cannot be avoided. B takes c3, and here white resigned. So this demonstrates the power of the Dragondorf system. Immediately we have our counterplay going, and those who are used to the Yugoslav attack will find themselves a little disorientated 
to what is actually happening. But this was just a simple blitz game. I'll, I'll show you a game I played on a correspondence site because correspondence chess, of course you have more time to make the moves and therefore the level of chess is a little higher. Okay, here's a game. Yours truly. Versus uh, someone with a very interesting name, Hertz van Rental. <laughs> and Hertz van Rental opened with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c, d, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3. And yours truly opened with g6. And looks like a main line dragon, but we are planning something else. And Black has plenty of resources at his disposable, disposal to counter the Yugoslav attack. Bishop e3 is main line, Bishop g7, f3 again main line, and here it is, a6, the Dragondorf. And as we have Spain, it's a hybrid between the Sicilian Dragon and the Sicilian Nydorf. Botvinnik has played it, as well as other high-level Grandmasters. Bishop c4, and I'm always glad to see this move, Bishop c4. Because what it means is that we can immediately get our counterplay with b5 in. Early. And it comes with tempo. But you need to be careful when making this move, because white can undermine this pawn structure with a4. Bishop goes to b3, and instead of the knight coming to c6, as we have mentioned, the knight goes to d7, as it often does in the Nydorf. And as you know, of course, it's heading for c4. But it'll put pressure on the queen side, and white will either be induced to chase it away, or to trade it once we will get advantage of two bishops. Queen d2 is pretty standard stuff. Bishop b7. And here, white castled. Now this is unusual. Normally he would have castled queenside and started a pawn store with g4, h4, h5. But anyway, we continue with their idea, knight to e5. And here white brought his own knight to d5. And now that I know that I'm not going to face a pawn storm against my castled kingside, I decide to castle. And the queen came to b4. X-raying this unprotected bishop here on b7. And it's at this point I decide to change the pawn structure. And it's an idea borrowed from the English opening. I'm going to play e6 and d5. And because I have two central pawns to one, this means that I will have a greater presence in the centre because of my extra pawn. So e6 was played kicking the knight, and the knight went back to c3. d5. And here white carries out his idea of a4. Trying to take advantage of the advanced nature of these pawns, and of course the pin against the unprotected bishop on b7. Well, if white's going to play on the flank, I'm going to play in the centre, and therefore I play d takes e4. f takes, and immediately I harass this unprotected bishop on e3. And the bishop comes to g5, pinning my knight, and queen to c7. 
Now I could have played a5 instead, something like this. It's a little more forcing, in fact. And I end up a piece up. But during the game I never in fact saw that. And instead I played what appeared to me to be the best move. Queen to c7, threatening of course, checkmate on h2. Well, my opponent played bishop to f4. And of course this is essentially a blunder. Can you see why? That's right. e5. Simple pawn fork, forking the bishop and the knight. Bishop went to g3. Queen b6. And here I gobbled up the knight on d4. Queen came to e7 trying some tricks. Queen back to d7. Queens were exchanged. Knight c5. Bishop d5 was played. Knight e3. Bishop came to f2. And here I played knight takes f1. I don't think it's the most accurate move. But the position was very complicated for me and I, I never really saw it clearly. And I, I apparently give up some adva disadvantage with this move. I think a better move would have been knight takes d5. And something like this might have ensued. And here we have two bishops in a fairly open position against a rook and a pawn. And I think this would be good for me. But I never saw that variation and I never played it. And I got caught up, I think, in the complications. Instead of, I played Instead of knight takes d5, I played knight takes f1. And we reach this position here. And here it gets quite interesting. If you look at the position, why it has three pass pawns. A very strong knight on d5 and for this we have an extra piece we get one of our pawns back with knight takes e4 and this knight is no longer no longer protected and of course white would love to create a pass pawn that is essentially we put so much pressure in my position that I would be unable to move. I would lose mobility trying to defend against these pawns. And of course, I have no interest. And here I exploit the fact that White has a very weak back rank. In fact, he's facing checkmate. Rook to a6 was played. And the rook came back hitting this undefended knight. C4, defending the knight with a pawn, and knight to c5. I, I really like this move. The knight is an excellent blockader, and if you if you watch the the video on past pawns, you will realise that. But here, it not only defends against the advancement of these past pawns, but it attacks the rook as well. And if you can get a move in which attacks and defends at the same time, it is a Generally, a very good move. Rook to a1 was played. Knight to b3, hitting the rook again. Rook to d1. And here I lodged my own knight in the outpost d4. b3 and king g7. And this move simply stops 
any nonsense of this night invading on F6. Knight to B6 was played. Bishop E7, Rook to B1, and here Knight takes B3 is winning, simply because the pawn was unprotected and cannot be taken because of the weak back rank. If the rook takes, white gets checkmated. Knight to d5 and knight to d2. And here my opponent simply resigned because there is no defence to a move like knight takes c4. Because even if he defends with the rook, something like this, I can simply take it. And he cannot defend any of his position because of the weakness of the back rank and the weakness of the pawn. So very, very interesting and dynamic game using this system of the Dragondorf. And if you like dynamic play, if you like tactical as well as positional play, then I suggest that you try the Dragondorf. Normally what will happen is White will try and go into some type of Yugoslav attack, trying to open up files against your castle king. And guess what? Your king is not in the centre. <laughs> and therefore, he gets a little bit um, dismayed or, or disorientated because the object of his attack is no longer there. And in the meantime, we're, raging, we're getting a raging attack going ourselves down the queen side. So thank you very much my chess friends for watching this little chess video and if you need any advice or any guidance or any suggestions on this particular opening system then please let me know and I will be more than happy to help you according to the best of my ability. So thanks once again for watching the video and I do wish you well with your own chess.